So we looked last day. We looked last day at half life. At well, we, we practiced some more exponential growth word problems. We said they all fit this template of a equals a zero c to the t over b. They may use different letters. For example, I notice in number one, way back here, they're using n and n zero, and instead of t over something. T over P. It looks like whatever that over P was as a fraction, as a decimal, it was 0.43. So instead of writing it as a fraction, they wrote it as a decimal. Fine. I can deal with that. Um, here as well, instead of using, oh, they are using A, but instead of using T, they're using N for the number of years. Fine. I can deal with that. Were there any of these that you were wondering about? I assigned you a bunch. I'm going to be assigning you a few more today. Going once. Number five. I figured someone would ask number five. Did you try number five? Okay. Uh, since I've just turned the page, I'm going to do this, I think. A equals A zero C to the T over P. I'm going to write down my little template equation. Who has five cars in there? Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure this 500 is my initial amount. Is that okay? I'm pretty sure this 150 is my final amount. Is that okay? We lose 18%, which means I think we keep 72%. So far, so good. And it's each time we go through a filter. Now, I've got to translate this a bit. This is not in terms of time. But I think my period is every filter. Every one filter is when we lose 18%. Wouldn't it be 0.82 because I can't do math? Thank you. 18 minus, how about 0.82? Good gosh. And uh, they want the number of filters. You know what? I'll call that N instead of T because T is time. But they, it, it, it's fitting the same idea. Instead of years passing, it's filters passing. Is that okay so far? You got that part or not? No? Okay. Now... When you solve this, anybody solve this? Did you get this one? What did you get for your M or your T when you solved it? Okay, see, I think you get this. You need 6.1 filters, and if you look in the back, they did not round it down to 6. They rounded it up to 7, and the reason is it does say less than 150 less than 150 grams. Uh, you know what? If I round down, six filters is not going to be enough, just shy of being enough. Is that all right? Oh, see, she actually did attach a check to the note. Dear Mr. Do It, here's a check. That's how you be late. That's a bit of a tricky one. I probably won't give you one that strangely worded on your test. In fact, almost certainly it's going to be a half-life question and some kind of a population growth or population loss question. Any others? Nine? Okay. This one is so easy that it's tough, and here's what I mean. First of all, I did in my mind underline the word half-life that tells me that C is going to be 0.5. Uh, I'm going to write down my template A equals A0 C to the T over P. Who asked me number nine? Came from over there. Amanda, what are they asking me to find here? Well, you know what? Let's use a process of elimination. What's this 30? I'm going to give you a hint. It's an amount. It's either the final amount or the initial amount. Absolutely. Oh, it's a half-life question. I know C is 0.5. That's how half-life is defined. It's a growth rate of 0.5. You lose 50% every time. What's this 12? Well, next to it is the word years. I think that's the total time. And we said your growth period is also your half-life. Amanda, when they tell me the half-life is 5.2, 5.2 5 
They're saying that goes there. You know what they're asking me to find in this question? How much we start out with. Is that okay so far? Is this an exponent? How would I get it by itself then? What's happening between the A and the bracket? You know what? The initial amount is going to be your final amount divided by 0.5 to the power of 12 over 5.2. And this is straight calculator now. I'm going to go on my calculator. 30 divided by 0.5 to the power of... How many terms are there in my exponent, Amanda? How many numbers are there in my exponent? Two, I better use brackets. You know how much you need to start out with? 148.5, uh, what does it say? To the nearest gram, 140, you need 149 grams if you want at least 30 grams left over after 12 years. Is that okay? Yep. And so I guess my point is I can ask you to solve for this or this as well as these exponents. Now if I'm asking you it's to solve for one of the ones that's an exponent, log both sides. If I'm asking you to solve for one of the ones that's on ground level, just multiply or divide. It, it's calculator, plug and chug, and a bit of arithmetic. Is that all right? Yep. Okay. Can you do me a favor, please? Could you turn to page 204? Page 204. What we need to talk about today is base E. I'm wearing my base E shirt. E, it's a Scrabble tile and a number. It is. I made this one up myself, actually. This was my idea. And on the back, I have an exponential graph because, as Kirsten knows, every single exponential graph looks like this. Or So if you have a base of 2, it looks like this. If you have a base of E, it looks like this. Remember we said E was this weird, strange number. E was uh, second function. E, uh, e was 2.718281828, and it looks like it repeats. It does not. Right off your page, it goes all haywire. In fact, if you want E to about 1,000 decimal places, here it is. Why is base E so useful? Remember this fishing question here? Here's what we were doing mathematically when we solved this by having it decrease by 5% each year. On January 1st, there would be 2,500 fish. On December 1st, there would still be 2,500 fish. On December 31st, there would still be 2,500 fish. But on December 31st, at one minute to midnight, boom, you lose 5%. And then all throughout the year, the fish population stays the same. And Katie, just before midnight on New Year's Eve, boom, you lose another 5%. Is that how populations really work? I think, Cassandra, populations grow continuously. When you have a big enough population, the human population, for example, there are babies being born every split second, not nothing happening until, boom, right before you move on to the next growth period, and then all the growth occurs. Most things grow continuously, all the time. You know what base is the most useful, what base best describes populations that grow continuously? As soon as you have a population that's fairly big in the millions, let's say, you know what base best describes how they grow? Base E. We call it the continuous growth rate. This is why base E is so useful. Kirsten, as soon as your population is big, you can reasonably assume, look, we're not having a baby every five hours. We're having a baby now, now, in fact, even faster than I can snap my fingers. As soon as your population is big, the growth is occurring instantaneously. It's a much better mathematical model for large populations. So the university population in example one increased by 4.5% per year. This increase probably occurred at the beginning of each semester. 
You don't gain university students in February. You gain university students in September, and you gain them in January. So there, base E wouldn't make much sense. But if you're looking at a bacteria that's spreading, base E would make a lot of sense because that bacteria is spreading virally. In fact, we even use that word in English now. It's, we talk about videos going viral. It describes exponential growth. It's a base E question. Other populations, such as the population of the world, increase at a continuous rate. And the formula for continuous growth, and I will give you this one on a test. You don't have to memorize this one. Is that. Now, you can make an educated guess as to what most of this means. Steph, what do you think P0 means? Yep. And you know what P by itself means? Final. Your base is E. Now, remember, that's not a letter. Looks like a letter to me, Mr. Jo it's a symbol. It's a number. Your base is 2.718281828. Your base is there. Hey, Steph, what do you think T stands for? Time. And then K stands for your growth constant. Instead of writing T over P, because with base E, you don't want a growth period because you want it to be happening all the time. You don't want a half-life. You want it to be happening all the time. We don't write it as a fraction. We write it as a decimal in front. And we call that the growth constant. Why do we use the letter K? Because not every single English word Math is not all done by English-speaking people. It was a word for constant in a different letter that began with K. Oh, Steph, here it is. P0 is the initial population. P is the final population. K is called the growth constant. If you're increasing, K is positive. If you're decreasing, K ends up being negative because that's what gives you a negative decay graph. Here's an example. The intensity I0 of a light source is reduced to I after passing through D meters of a fog. According to the formula, I equals I0 E to the negative 0.12 D. Now, first of all, how many of you have been in the fog at night before? And have you driven or been a passenger while driving? You'll notice the further away the light goes, the dimmer it gets. Your headlights don't work very far away. And you know what? It makes sense that that would be a continuous growth because every micromillimeter that you move, your headlights have dimmed by a tiny bit. It's not like your headlights are uh, all the same for one meter and then they dim and all the same for one meter and then they dim. I think every split, every split millimeter that you move, every split micrometer that you move, every split nanometer that you move, the headlights have changed by a tiny bit. The strength of the headlights have changed in the fog. So basically this makes sense. What's the negative in the exponent telling me? Uh, the intensity is getting smaller. Okay. In what distance? Oh, what do they want me to find here, Holly? Which variable do you think stands for distance in the original equation? Take an educated wild guess from your knowledge of math. You're right. D, which means they're probably going to tell me I is your initial intensity and I fi final intensity to the nearest hundredth of a meter, will the intensity be reduced to one quarter of its original value? Okay. That means they're going to tell us this, and they're going to tell us this. And remember, E is E. We're going to use the letter E on our calculator. The key phrase is this last phrase. This tells me my final intensity. What's my final intensity? What? You know what? I'm going to be clever. I'm going to let it be 1 quarter, 0.25 if you don't mind. And if I do that, what's my initial intensity? 1. By the way, you could also, don't write this down, you could also have done final intense, uh, initial of 4, final of 1. You could also have done initial of 8, final of 2. That's 1 quarter. You all wrote 0.25 and 1 there. Leave that there. 
don't write this down. Supposing I had gone, uh, I'm going to let my final be uh, one and my initial be four. I would don't write this down. I would plug this into the equation. What would I do with that four? I would divide right away, and you know what I get over on this side? One divided by four, which is what? Point. To five, which is why I said to you the other day, if they ever give you like a half a population or one third a population, you can use the original and then divide by three or double, or you can just use ones and twos and threes and ones. It's it's much more convenient. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. Let's see. We said we're gonna let our initial be one, our final be 0.25, and that's gonna give me. Now you can write this down. 0.25 equals one times e to the negative point two D. Ashley, will this one make any difference when I divide it over? Okay, I'll leave it there to remind us that we put it there, but it's going to vanish on the next line if that's okay. Ashley, where is the D sitting? Because that's what they want me to find. Exponent. You know what I'm going to do? Ah! I'm not going to take the log of both sides. What's my base? E. You know what I'm going to take of both sides? LN. Yeah, LN of both sides, which is another base that are, and this is why your calculator has that base built in, actually. LN of both sides. I'm going to go LN of 0.25, and I usually handwrite LN because I'm worried if I print LN, I'll think that's 1N later on because I'm stupid that way because that looks an awful lot like that one. You don't have to if your writing looks different from mine, but my printing, bleh. So I'm going to handwrite LN every time equals the LN of E to the negative 0.12D. So far, so good. Ryan, what can I do with this exponent? Since it's in, no, no, it's inside a log. What can I do with this exponent? Shrugging? Nathan, what can I do with this exponent? This is the whole point of this, folks. We, no, no, we have to know this. Uh-oh, I'm a little worried now. I can get it down. The whole point of this is to do that because now I can get it down to ground level. Yes, 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 yes. Nod your head. Okay, excellent. I get this. LN of 0.25 equals negative 0.12D LN of E. Is that okay so far, Cassandra? Remember, LN was actually our way of writing log base what? When I use ln, that's the log base what? You're right. Say it louder. Whoever said it, say it louder. Say it means actually say it physically louder, not just repeat it at the same volume. Say it louder. You're right. No. No. Sorry. I thought you said the other one. My bad. That's base 10. What was ln? Base what? E. E. Now, why is that nice? I'm going to read this, but instead of saying ln of E, I'm going to read that as log base E of E. What is the log base E of E? Ah. Right? Which is why we actually chose to go with LN instead of log, because our base was E. That was going to have a log cancel later on. In fact, I have this. LN of 0.25 equals negative 0.12d. How would I get the d by itself now? Well, now we're math 8 or math 9. How would I get the d by itself, Steph? I think you're right. Yeah. d is going to be whatever the ln of 0.25 is all divided by negative 0.12d. And, oh, not 0.12d, Mr. Duke. How about divided by negative 0.12? Duh, I need to leave a variable there. Hi, you said there was math night! Shut up. 
Oh, calculator. LN 0.25 divided by negative 0.12. You know what? 11 point uh, to the nearest hundred, 11.55 meters. That's when the light is one quarter as strong as it was from the original location. Okay. Base E. How will you know you're supposed to use base E? They'll either use as a trigger phrase continuous growth or you'll see a base E equation given to you in the question. So part of your homework today if you can turn, please, to page 208. Page 208, you can add number 6. Now, number 6 is a little bit tricky. I'm deliberately not explaining it because the first thing they're asking you to find is K. They're asking you to find K. That must mean they're going to give you X and I0 and I. Oh, what's X measured in? What's right next to the letter X here? What are the units? What's next to this number? I'm pretty sure that's X. Apparently, when X is 9, you, they'll also tell you I and I0 to find K. Then once you found K, you can use it for part B. If you can't figure that out, I'll talk about it tomorrow or a bit later on in class. Um, really, though, the kind of question I'm going to give you is much more similar to number 7. How can you glance at number 7 and tell that it's a continuous growth base E question? No. Okay. Remember yesterday we uh, opened to a blank page or on a scrap piece of paper? Last class, we did some examples. Same thing, except this time it's going to be changing the base. You can either do this right near the same page where we did some more exponential growth equation examples, or on a set of piece of paper. What we're going to look at here, Itzel, is how can you change the base? If they give you an equation with a certain base, can you rewrite it as a different base? And yes, you can. And there is going to be, I think, one of these on your test somewhere where I'll ask you to change the base. So the heading is changing the base. And the first question I gave you is, a population is increasing at a rate of 12% per year. A population is increasing at a rate of 12% per year. Write an equation describing this. So write that far. Don't bother putting B in yet because I don't know how much room we're going to need. Hey, oop, I don't want to do that. Hey, it did it again. That's silly. Okay. Here, do this, what you do it. There. What would an equation look like? Well, let's write down our template. A equals A zero C to the t over p. The fact that it's 12% per year, that tells us the growth period. What is the growth period here? It's implied. 1. And we're increasing at 12%. I think the generic equation is going to look like this. Your final population is going to be your initial population to the power of t over 1. What would your rate, your base be right here if we're increasing by 
Yeah. That's an equation, a generic equation. Hello. Okay. Try that again. Move it down. That's an equation, a generic equation, that describes that particular growth. I lost the two there somehow. The problem is doing math with a base of 1.12 is yucky if you're trying to do math in your head. I'd like to rewrite this equation as base 2. I'd like to rewrite that, but instead of 1.12 to the t, I'd like 2 to some power. I don't want to change my initial population. I don't want to change my final population. I want to replace 1.12 to the t with 2 to the KT. Say what? Hang on, bear with me. In fact, I want to replace that 1.12. I want to replace that with a 2. Now the problem here is this. Does 1.12 equal 2? No. But you know what? 1.12 equals 2 to some power. And traditionally, we use the letter K to symbolize that power. What number would go there? Oh, I can solve it. Where It's going to be a decimal, I'm sure. Where is this number sitting? An exponent? How will I solve for this? Log both sides, I absolutely agree. So I'm going to go like this. The log of 1.12 equals the log of 2 to the k. Nathaniel, what can I do with this k? Darn right, that's the whole point of this. And in fact, I'll get the log of 1.12 equals k log 2. Tyson, how would I get the k by itself? I think k is going to be the log of 1.12 over the log of 2 and give it to me to like three, let's even say four decimal places. You get point one six three five. What does that mean? What do three dots mean? Therefore, I can replace that 1.12 with a 2 to the 0.1635. Which means I can replace that 1.12 to the t, which is what I had in my original equation. With a two point, not two point, Mr. Dude, two to the point one six three five to the T.
Katie, is that okay? I'm saying 1.12 is the same as 2 to the power of 0.1635. How do I know? Because I set up the equation to figure that out. And so I can replace that 1.12 with a 2 to the 0.1635 and the t and the t. Is that okay, Katie? Don't write this next bit down. Therefore, don't write this next bit down. My original equation... is the same as, don't write this down yet because I'm writing it differently, except, is this a power to a power? Yeah? What do I do when I have a power to a power? What did we do with the exponents? multiply them. You know what? This is how we're going to write this. We're just going to tack the t on there instead of having an extra exponent. I can rewrite. Now this is what you want to write down. Therefore, my original equation is this base 2. My original equation which was a growth rate of 12%, can be rewritten as a base of 2, but I have to have that decimal in my exponent because I have to replace the 1.12 with 2 to some power. Number two, which for some reason has become a number one because I turned the automatic numbering on and I should have not bothered trying to make a list, but that's okay. Number two, suppose we have a equals a0, 1.07 to the t. By the way, what percent is this population increasing by? Can you see it? 7%. rewrite this it says as a doubling equation that means they we want us to rewrite this as base 2 what's my original base here what's my original base in this equation what's my original base in this equation 1.07. What do I want it to become? So what we're really saying is this. I want to replace the 1.07 with a 2. But that's a nonsense statement right there. 1.07 is not equal to 2. However, 1.07 is equal to 2 to some power. It is. How can I figure out what exponent I would put there? And by the way, almost always, again, if you're changing the base, you'll end up with a yucky decimal exponent. Very rarely will these work out evenly. Once in a while, but not very often. What am I going to do now, Carson? I'm going to take the log of both sides. Ryan, my friend, what can I do with this K? Darn right. Thank you for being back with me. In fact, I'll get this. K equals the law. Ah, Mr. Duick, you're doing too much work at once. Okay, this is frustrating me now. I'll have to never use automatic numbering. This is what happens when I type in here. I'll get the log of 1.07 equals k log 2. I think k is going to be the log of 1.07 divided by the log of 2. Give me k to four decimal places. What would you get, Andrew? 0 0.0976. Is that rounded off properly? Okay. So, 
If I want to write this equation as a doubling equation, it's going to be final amount equals initial amount 2 to the point zero nine seven six t. That's the same equation. If you were to graph that, you'd get the same equation as with a base of 1.07. Maybe because we've rounded off a tiny bit after a while, it might not quite overlap. But certainly for the first million or so, it would overlap quite nicely. Um, hey, let's try rewriting this as a tripling equation. That means we want to replace the 1.07 with uh, not a base of 2, but a base of 3 to the k. Try that one on your own. See if you can figure out what k has to be and what your new equation would look like. I'll freeze the screen and I'll do it up here. Yeah? We can rewrite any base as any other base. The most common one's 2, because 2 is a nice number to do arithmetic with. 10, because 10 is a nice number to do arithmetic with. Oh, and if you've been taking a sample of a population, and you've been recording the data every month, but you know your population is big enough that it grows continuously, base E. Base E. What we're saying here is 1.07 equals E to the K. Rewrite this as base E using A0, sorry, A equals A0 E to the KT. I did tell you that whenever I ask you a base E question, I will give you this equation. That's the one we're not asking you to memorize. But you know what? It's the same as the original equation that we've been looking at, except we just write it a bit differently with base E, with decimals for the period instead of fractions. We're really saying replace the 1.07 with that. Oh, now, where is the k sitting? It's an exponent. I'm not going to take the log of both sides. Steph, ln of both sides. and the k will move to the front. Oh, and why would, why did we tick the ln of both sides? Because what is the ln of e? What is the log base e of e? That k is just going to be the ln of 1.07. And I get 0.0677, I guess, if I round off properly. 0.0677. Which means my actual equation base E, if I take that 7% growth, would look like this. What if you got a negative here? What if you got a negative here? It tells you your population is decreasing, and you'd have to double check your original question to make sure your growth rate was not 7% increase, but less than 1. 7% 7 decrease. Good gosh, this is doing it again. 
irritating me now. Okay. Dope. Oh, it's going to stay, I guess. That's just terrible notes. Oh, well. <sighs> Last one. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Rewrite P equals P0 times 0.78 to the T as base E by finding the growth constant K and writing your answer in the form P equals P0 E to the K T. Change the base from 0.78 to E. What we're really seeing here, saying here is, hey, take that 0.78 and make it e to something. Try this one on your own. I'll do it slowly up here if you get stuck. Is that okay? Back to page 208. So page 208. Actually, page 211, if you want to be really fussy. So now I'm going to assign number 15. In number 15, in part D, they're asking you to rewrite it with a base of 1 half instead of a base of 0.96. They want you to rewrite it as a half-life equation. Okay? And then it says, use the equation in D to determine the mass remaining after 1 hour. Sixteen is a base E question. You know how I can tell just by glancing at it that sixteen is a base E question? Hello. Um nah, seventeen, nah. Eighteen is good. 19 is good. This is a long assignment. I've given you a bunch of stuff here, but I've given you three classes to work on it, and I've tried to give you time to work on it. Okay. So there it is, exponential growth. On Friday, we're going to look at a specific example of exponential growth called compound interest. We're also going to finish off the unit on Friday. Take-home quizzes next week. Test a week from Monday is the plan.